What's up, what's up? Welcome to another episode, Master Motes Film Session, and it is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbooking app, and we know sportsbooking isn't allowed everywhere, but fantasy football is. So with that being said, DraftKings has a fantasy football app where they are giving out up to $1 million in prizes every single week. So Stop wasting time. Download both DraftKings Sportsbook and DraftKings Fantasy Football app. Use the promo code MOTES and ultimately get a chance to make some money, baby. That's all you want is a chance. <sighs> and here I get a chance to talk about the Buffalo Bills and uh, their performance on Sunday night against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this first play we're going to be breaking down is Teron Johnson's pick six in the second quarter. Great play by him. So you know how we do this thing. We'll play it in full speed. And after that, we'll break. Get down. And favorite part of the whole breakdown, as you already know, the Telestrator. That's Teron right there. All right. Alrighty, so you know the first thing we got to do, we got to talk about the coverage. All right, so to start it out, man, with the Bills are in on this particular play, it's just a simple cover two, but it's a Tampa two concept, okay? Tampa two and cover two, very similar, but they have one very distinct difference about them. So first off, let's draw what Tampa two is. You got this guy right here. You can have that safety right there, okay? He's gonna have that half of the field. He's gonna have this half of the field. This corner, he's on a squat technique, okay? So he's gonna reroute number one, he's just gonna be sinking underneath. This corner over here is gonna, like I said, reroute anything that comes out here, but he's gonna be super aggressive on any outbreaking route, all right? Teron, he's vertical hook. So typically, when you're playing vertical hook, you wanna be inside leverage of the number two receiver, and you wanna carry that guy if he goes vertical or if he bursts out, you will run out with him until he reaches this corner. Same on this side, Um, the other linebacker, he's in here somewhere, okay? So as we play this thing, it's gonna have a corner. I mean, another linebacker right here is gonna be vertical hook, similar uh, similar technique as Teron. And then um, Tremaine, who is the uh, Mike linebacker, he's gonna be what you call your middle runner. So he's, saw, he's showing up at the line of scrimmage. Great job for the skies element of it. But his job is just running the middle of the field, okay? And he wants to just make sure that because these safeties are split, anything coming across the middle, he's gonna pick up on, okay? That's the biggest difference when you're talking about Tampa 2 versus cover 2. Cover 2, you're not going to have this middle runner, okay? You won't have this guy here. And Tampa 2, you will. All right? So those are the biggest differences when you're talking Tampa versus cover 2. So right here, that's it. It's all just window dressing, walk around, show a little bit pre-snap. But right here, what do we get to? Vertical hook, vertical hook. He's your middle runner, and he's looking to three, okay? Because the rules for the middle runner are you open to number three, or if it's two by two, you open to speed, meaning if there's a slot receiver, you open to the slot receiver instead of opening up to the tight end side. So that's why he opens up to this way, because it's what? Three receivers over here. So from here, you see he's settling in because that's the end breaking route. Now, right here on the outside, okay, when we're talking about uh, Johnson's technique and uh, this corner up here's technique, Two things that are gonna show up is this right here. Number one, he's not gonna give any ground. See, he's lateral shuffling, right? Typically, if you're a DB or a corner and you got this receiver coming at you right now, if you have vertical carry or any type of responsibility with this guy, man or whatever, you're gonna be opening up and getting ready to run with him. He does a great job though, staying square, and right when the guy gets even, he makes it appear like he was gonna run with them, but he's breaking down. He's coming downhill because he sees this out route. And then with Johnson, his technique, he's staying inside leverage because he knows his whole responsibility is what? I can't get beat across my face, but if anything goes out, I have help out, I have help out there so I can be super aggressive and I don't have any vertical carry. So you see, he's also what? Flat-footed, he's staying square, he's shuffling, no backpedal with his game because he knows right now if Juju breaks across, he's breaking down, but he has hope over here. He knows if he breaks out, he has a guy out here. He knows if he goes vertical, he's protected. So now you can be super aggressive as a vertical hook defender, which he does a great job of. And on this throw, throws a little bit behind, right? 
and it's a couple of reasons why I think this throw is behind. Number one, I think that this quarterback, he does see this corner coming down. He knows, number one, if it's cover two, I cannot leave this guy too far outside because it's going to set him up. He's going to get a kill shot or this corner could potentially jump to make the pick. Now, because of that, you're forced to put it a little bit inside. OK, so as much as you would want to put it on his chest, the throw was just a little bit behind. So now it's back behind him. So now this receiver has to reach behind. And that is where the setup happens. That is how this turnover is created. The ball being thrown behind more so, like I said, because of the late throw and because of the, the placement just being a little bit off along with this corner jumping down on it. Now you get the perfect scenario for Johnson, who's able, who's already breaking, reading his keys, makes a great job using his hands to catch this ball. And then from there, you're off to the races, man. But this was very fundamental, man. Very fundamental by Johnson and that Bills defense on this play and executing the Tampa 2 defense the perfect way. I love the double mug design too because when you're playing against a veteran quarterback like the Bills are doing right now, it's hard to confuse these guys. So if you're not going to be able to confuse them with a lot of pre-snap disguise, you want to do something where it it's, it's simple for you, but it's going to be super confusing for him. You show double mug because that makes it look like we're all going to blitz. You don't know if he's coming or if he's not coming. You don't know. Their body language isn't giving you any type of telltale. So that's going to make this quarterback who is a veteran who's seen a lot of football really have to spend a little bit more time making his read. Or if he guesses, he could potentially guess wrong right here. But I thought this was a smart job by the Bills, especially on this on this uh, at this uh, stage of the, uh, the game right here. But we talk about it, man, the pass being slightly behind. OK, slightly behind and great mechanics by 24, man, just making his read, staying patient and then breaking the way he's supposed to break. This perfect storm. And then, man, big time play, man. This really broke the game open in terms of just killing the Steelers momentum here. And ultimately, man, anytime on defense, you're able to create points, not only get a takeaway, but create points. That is huge. But you see ball behind. And then from there, just off to the races and great job, man. Great job using your speed. Don't get caught. That's that's the biggest thing right here. You protect that ball. You are not allowed to get caught. And you did a great job right there, man.